How's it going everyone? In this video, I wanna show you how to set up email hosting on AWS for a domain that you've registered with Route 53. Uh, and we're gonna do that using Amazon Workmail here. And here I am on the product page. And if we just take a look at what Amazon Workmail is, it's really not that complicated of a service. Um, it's, it's a managed service for email, provides everything you would expect from AWS in terms of security, in terms of compatibility, uh, in terms of integration with other existing mail systems. And it's also got a neat little externalized URL so you can uh, kind of access it from just a website and it actually works pretty well. I was really impressed with that. Um, and also it's very, very low cost. So we can see here that Workmail costs around $4 per user. And that also includes 50 gigabytes of storage per user that's included in that cost. Now, I think that's a really reasonable cost, especially when you compare that to some of the other competitors, including GoDaddy and DigitalOcean and all them, anyone that really provides email hosting. Uh, the convenience of doing it through Workmail is that a lot of us set up domain names on AWS, but we tend to use other providers to actually host it. And now with Amazon Workmail, you can get everything uh, all integrated on AWS, so it's truly going to be your one-stop shop. Uh, so in order for this tutorial to work, you're going to need obviously an AWS account. You're going to need a domain name. Uh, and if you don't know how to do either of those things, if you don't have an account, I'll leave a video for that down below on how to do that. And secondly, I have another video where I show you how to register a domain and I actually walk you through the entire process. Again, I'll put that down below. So make sure you go check that out if there's any confusion around those topics or you need a hand through the process. So now I'm going to head over to the AWS console. Let's just make this a little bit bigger here so everyone can see. Uh, so I just want to first of all show you what I already have for my Route 53 section. So let's just go to Route 53 and take a look at the website that I have registered or the domain, I should say, that I have registered. All right. So now let's check out the hosted zone to see some details about the hosted zone uh, for this domain. So AWS Simplified.io is the domain that I registered. That is my website. I'm going to click on that and just show you what I have here for the DNS entries. So everything you would expect got the NS and the SOA and then uh, a record for AWS simplify.io and then a C name www.awssimplify.io which points back to this guy. Uh, so nothing out of the ordinary here. This is just how you set up some basic routing for your website. Uh, so that's what we're starting with. And the reason I want to point this out is because we need to do some uh, DNS modifications and I kind of want you to see what it looks like from the beginning to see how it changed a little later. So that's enough for uh, Route 53. Now let's go over to uh, Workmail now and actually set up the uh, mail server and the organization and all that. Uh, so I just typed in Amazon Workmail, as you saw. So I'm going to click on Create Organization here on the right. And so we get a neat little wizard here that kind of guides us through the process. Um, quick setup is great for getting started, allows you to really just blast through this thing without worrying about too many of the details. Uh, if you're a little bit more experienced and you may opt to use, oops, uh, standard setup, which allows you to set up some more fine grain configuration. Uh, so like you're seeing here, integration with Active Directory, uh, specific KMS key for encryption, and then integration again with these other services as well. Now we're not gonna worry about that in this video. I'm just gonna do the quick Quick setup here, which allows us to basically do this as quickly as possible. So in this box here, an organization name, you can just put whatever you basically want here. Uh, and I'm just going to keep it consistent for me. So I'm going to call it AWS Simplified. You probably want to set this to whatever your kind of root domain name is. And you'll see here after I typed in AWS Simplified, if we look at this URL, we have HTTPS AWS Simplified AWS apps.com slash mail. And this is the URL that we're going to use a little bit later to actually log in to our online mail server where we can see our email, where we can write emails and receive emails and everything like that. Uh, so let's move on and click on create now in the bottom right. And okay, so now the next step is creating. So this often takes a couple minutes or so uh, to get everything provisioned. So I'll just fast forward this until it's done. Okay, so after a minute or so, this finally changed state. Now you can see that it's currently inactive. Uh, so we need to do a couple little modifications here to make sure that this works correctly. So first of all, let's click on our organization now. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add our domain to this organization so that we can create emails such as daniel at aws simplified.io or bob at aws simplified.io obviously in your case this would be whatever your first name is or whatever your name is and your domain name but we need to do a little bit of setup before we can actually do that in workmail so we need to go on the left here and click on domains in the left hand uh, column here 
And so this is kind of the base domain that's given to you automatically, but I wanna add my custom domain that I have registered on Route 53. Like we saw before, it was awssimplified.io. I don't wanna have this nasty URL, so I don't want like Daniel at awssimplified.awsapps.com. Like that's, that's pretty gross. So I'm gonna click on add domain now, and you're gonna put in the name of your domain. So it's automatically detecting that I already have one registered via Route 53, so it's just suggesting that for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And you're just gonna click on add domain. And sometimes this can take a minute. Uh, that was actually pretty quick. A bunch of screens just flashed in front of my face. Not sure what happened there. Um, but the next step here is to configure some DNS records. Uh, and if you recall at the beginning of the video, I was showing you in row 53, uh, all the DNS records and kind of what the configuration was. So you can either do that automatically. So just by clicking this button, it's gonna go ahead and create all those records for you. Or if you're really particular or you have some very special uh, configuration that exists on your domain, you may need to do that manually. For probably 99% of us, we can just use configure automatically. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. It's basically just like a one click stop. So we're gonna click on that. And it's gonna show you here all of the records that it's adding into my domain. So, so we can see here we have an MX record, a text record, some C names, more text, uh, the host name, the values, everything that is basically necessary for the DNS server is gonna be provided automatically using this little wizard thing. Uh, so I'm gonna go on the bottom right here and click on add all records. So that just got added and sometimes it takes a little bit of time uh, for verification. So you can see here, it's giving us a little bit of a warning. Uh, so the records have been successfully added to awssimplified.io. It can take up to 72 hours for this domain to be verified. Okay, so this actually only took about five minutes or so for me. So there's actually no waiting involved, which is really great. And that means I can also show you the rest of this, which is uh, how to actually set up the user account, so the user email. So now that we have this verified, we can proceed to the next step. And that's to actually create the user, or create the email account for a particular individual. So go to the left hand side here and click on the users button. And we're going to go and click on create user, this little blue button here. Uh, now for your username, set this to whatever you want. Uh, my name is Daniel, we're gonna use Daniel. I'm gonna set my first name, I'm gonna leave that blank, and then your display name, that can be whatever you actually want to appear uh, kind of within the Workmail console. So click on next step now. And so this automatically gets pre-populated. So Daniel at awssimplified.io. So this is the key here. Now that we've verified our domain, awssimplified.io is a selectable option. If you tried to do this before your domain was verified, you would only have been able to select this kind of uh, work apps or sorry, work mail supplied email. So this is great. We're going to click on that, put in whatever password you want. So I already have mine on my clipboard. I'll just paste that in there. And then we're going to click on add user. So now you can see my user has been successfully created. Uh, so we can actually go ahead and try to access this user's email through the console. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and access the Workmail console now, which is where we can actually interact with our email. Uh, so let's just go back to organizations. And you can see here our default mail domain is awssimplify.awsapps.com. Uh, so that's great. Let's grab this guy um, and we're going to go up to our browser here. And let me just open up a new tab and we're going to paste that in. And we're just going to add slash mail to the end of it. And this is going to bring us to the login console for the user that we just created. Uh, so this opens the Amazon Workmail client. So you're going to put in Daniel uh, or whatever username that you created and then go ahead and type in the password that you just used for the user. Now you can go ahead and click on sign in and the next screen is, oops, if I close all these, and the next screen is going to be the Workmail client. So this is where you interact with your email, where you send and receive and all that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and send an email to myself from a different email account. Uh, no subject. That looks good. So I just sent that to myself. So this should take a moment for it to come in. I'll click on refresh here every few moments until this comes in, but hopefully this all works. And you can see here that my inbox is now showing as one. If I click on that to refresh it, and you can see here that I just emailed myself. So you can see this came from my other email and this is just me saying hello to myself in another dimension. 
Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this showed you how easy it is to get started with email. Again, it's only $4 per user. So it's very, very cheap, very economical for those of you with, maybe you have low budgets. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the other ones on my channel. I'll put the other link to the video where I set up a, a domain and a WordPress site. I'll put that in the description section below as well. And one last thing, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.